All right, all right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Another Sunday night here in the beautiful and sunny land of YouTube. Well, it's always sunny in the land of YouTube, especially when you have hosts such as myself and beautiful people like you. We always have sunny dispositions. So, uh, yeah, good to see you guys once again. And um, I'm just rolling in from a uh, shout out to Italian Fest over in the wonderful land of Naperville, Illinois, like the nape of your neck, Naperville. Hey, happy to see you. My name's Russ. I'm here to tell you about Gatorade Fit, G Fit, one gram of sugar. It's a PepsiCo product. And <laughs> no, they're not a sponsor of the show. I was just finishing up this uh, tropical mango. Now, my big gripe with Gatorade is just all the sugar in it. You might as well be drinking a soda. Yeah, it's got it's got electrolytes, right? Uh, if you haven't seen Idiocracy, you might not get that reference. Do yourself a favor, watch Idiocracy. Just a fan tastic movie that I think you'll enjoy from Mike Judge, the creator of such jams as Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill and a few others that I think I'm missing. But it's pretty good. It's... Uh, it is sweetened with stevia. So way to go, PepsiCo. Nice job. And yeah, I love it, Shamir. Why not? So also, I don't know. Maybe I don't need the hat on. It's going to muck things up. It's a bad hair day for yours truly. So we've got an exciting podcast. Uh, well, this isn't a podcast. We can, don't get confused, guy. We've got, you know what it is. Do you know why I'm all out of sorts? Check this out. So, oh, by the way, Puckman, back from Southwest Florida, what's up? So in true Happy Gilmore fashion, and I guess I'm shilling for VF Corp here, ticker VFC, I just put on my brand new Timberland Metatarsal Guard work boots. When you're a metal worker as I am, which is something pretty cool, thinking that we're just taking metal and making it into different forms. I'm an artist, but with metal, and I am the dividend investing welder never forget that but check it out <laughs> showing for uh for timberland we got the metatarsal guard we got camo shorts on and you know it's all good here man i'm i'm making sure they fit breaking them in so all right i love you guys <laughs> it's it's not a new hairstyle it's i told you guys man i'm grow i got carried away over the years i haven't been to the barber in like six years maybe. So I came up with the hairstyle, kind of pilfered it from the 1930s, 1920s style. Um, if you go back and look, a lot of them did this. They had it really long on top. They'd slick it back and they would shave the sides. So um, I'm rocking it mostly because it's fi. It's very financially independent friendly because I've learned to do it myself. But uh, going shaving the sides, I started getting a little too crazy up toward the middle and it was starting to look more like a mohawk instead of like a viking cut or something but oh boy anyway oh dude darth uh we'll get started here in just a second everybody but yeah buddy hey everyone make sure you check out darth dividend out there in ohio football season's ramping up so check his check <laughs> check his channel out so i'm going to show you i put together a spreadsheet if you'd like it there's a link in the description below and i'll say hello to everybody again just hi i will chat with you i'm going to try and get through this one super quick uh put a little bit of work in on the front end for this so i can have more time to hang out and chat with you and steve don't let me forget the dividend news from Simply Safe Dividends to roll through. I may, it may slip my mind. So uh, keep me honest and make sure I remember to do that. So uh, good. I love it. Some of you, yeah, I know it's crazy, right? You tuned in to hear about the dividend aristocrat and we're the dude's showing you his Timberland boots, which is VF Corp, which hint, hint, there's a little bit of news from Simply Safe Dividends about VF Corp, ticker VFC, but I'll just pop on the screen right now the <laughs> the the spreadsheet i made which again uh click the link in the description below and you will be able to see it for yourself and go through it and you know peruse it at your own um uh, let me see if i can do this f11 there we go full screen here we go so these are all 67 dividend aristocrats 
And a dividend aristocrat is a company that has increased their dividend for 25 straight years, and they're a member of the S&P 500, which unfortunately does not include Enterprise Products Partners, ticker EPD, because they're not a member of the S&P 500, I believe. And it's funny, as I say that, I'm like, did I remember that right? Come on, brain. So what we got here, and again, check it out for yourself. If you, What is this bear up here? What the hell is Anonymous Panda? I have never seen that before. And now I'm mildly concerned. And I'm wondering if I'm a member of the being hacked, uh, which if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, we talked about red teaming your portfolio. We can talk about that in a minute. Uh, later this week with Microsoft, NVIDIA, Google, uh, OpenAI, um, Hugging Face. Hugging Face? Anyway, so let's let's focus. Let's talk about this. So, First up, what do we got? I just want to show you the best performing 20-year return. You can do this yourself. You can sort Z to A is right there. West Pharmaceutical Services, ticker WST. Check that out. A 20-year total return of 6,800%. And Sherwin-Williams is next uh, in the number two spot. And then Roper uh, is number, but some of these don't have big dividend yields. I mean, West has a 0.2% dividend yield, 0.9. But this is the thing that um, we really should try and wrap our heads around and why it can go against you is you don't want to buy a stock just for a high dividend because look at West Pharmaceutical. Man, if you didn't look, I, I don't know when they started paying that dividend, but look, 10-year total return of almost 900%, five-year total return of almost 230%. So just very, very strong. And as far as valuations go, the most undervalued is Cardinal Health. So you know what? I'll just, yeah, I'll show you on here. Let me, let me find it. So Cardinal Health, whether you agree or not, a to Z, right? Yeah, we'll bring it up, line it up at the tippy top. Cardinal Health. And I'm sorry if this is small, everybody. You know, I know you might be on your phone watching. We'll, we'll jump off of this in a second and you can put... Now, what is that? An anonymous squirrel. Is this people that are on it with me? I'm, I don't know what this is. I, I can't see your comments. So we're going <laughs> to, we're going to wrap this up. Ta-da, jazz hands. The, the number one is West Pharmaceutical, ticker WSC, and the most undervalued with a base valuation of $325, currently trading at $91.25. Again, this is based on alphaspread.com. Uh, I put that, I didn't put alpha spread, but you know, I'm telling you, I thought I typed it in there. So those are alphaspread.com. We also have the simply safe dividend.com safety score. And then this last column over here is the five-year dividend growth uh, growth rate, the five-year CAGR. And again, I took this, I mentioned in the newsletter from suredividend.com, and I made a copy, made some alterations, omitted some columns, and whatever. So Cardinal Health, there you go. That's the whole kitten caboodle, the big shebang of the video is the most undervalued is Cardinal Health. And I'd love to know, do you invest in Cardinal Health? Do you think they would ever hit $325 a share? And check this sheet out for yourself. A lot of good information in there. You can, uh, you know, check it out for yourself, as we said. So I'd love to know what you think of it. Um, yeah, I love it, dude. Uh, China's spying on me. So really cool. If you don't know, there's a thing called DEF CON 31. It's a hacker conference that's going on in Las Vegas this week, the 10th of the 13th. You know, it'd be cool, speaking of boots, to get some boots on the ground with my man, Ryan Williams. I don't know if he would go to that. But he, um, not he, uh, The so the White House feels that AI is just the, the large language models, the LLMs, are just moving way too fast. They're growing, they're rapidly evolving, and it's going to leave uh, potential security breaches, things that we're not going to be able to be aware of. So what they want to do is they're collaborating with DEF CON 31 to Red Team. And what Red Team means is that you have a group of hackers and they're trying to uh, expose flaws, weaknesses, vulnerabilities, so we can better, uh, so we can secure things better, make the public aware. And 
NVIDIA, Google, as we said, and Microsoft, as, as well as OpenAI, which is ChatGPT, and Stability and Hugging Face are the, the six big ones. And they're going to basically try to hack into the large, like hack into ChatGPT and see if they can make it do what, you know, different things, if they can make, give it a false prompt and whatever they can do to, to try and do that. So anyway, uh, you know what? This is... Um, Oh, uh, CAGR, compound annual growth rate. That's the average at what uh, essentially the dividend is growing. If you take that over a five-year period, 10-year, 20-year period, you add it up for every year, then divide by those years, and that's the average. So that's what uh, CAGR, CAGR, might be my act. No, uh, scrub, scr scratch that, as we would say in the Navy, belay my last I don't have an accent and we've been over this before and I'm just telling you guys, it's so strange. I just, I can't imagine what it would be like to have an accent. Like when we were talking with Haley Ike, Haley Eich from uh, just outside of London, I believe maybe she's in London proper. I don't know, but yeah, we, we started the interview off asking her, what's it like to have an accent? So um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, funny. I know funny, funny, right? But yeah, dude, so, so sad. Paul Rubens passed away, uh, 70 years old, I believe. Right. And dude looked good, kept himself up there, battled cancer. So you know what? It just goes that we all have an expiration date and we all don't know it. And like Charlie Munger says, uh, just tell me where I'm going to die. So I don't go there. And apparently the dude's going to be a hundred. So somebody might have just told him, where he's going to die and he's just not going there. So he may, uh, he may outlive us. And you know what, dude, shout out one penny at a time podcast, uh, write it down, scribble it down. If you got it, uh, Harris, my buddy, Harris Elliott, he's going to, uh, have myself and Ryan Williams on some kind of free for all, uh, podcast episode, his one year anniversary. So congratulations on that. And, what is that? The thin, is that me? Dude, I could be the thin man from Charlie's Angels. I was just talking with my brother-in-law today. I'm going to try and up my protein and get up to like 190 pounds. It's crazy. I've been probably, I've, I've been vacillating between 177 and like 183 for 30 years. It just, it's nutty, but we need more of those pep dividends to do it, right? Here we go. Do you guys, what are you guys buying? Let me know. What do you want to talk about? Again, I want you to direct the remainder of this. I'm going to scroll through. So I want to say hello, everybody. And um, if I miss something important, pop it up again. But I want to be caught up with you for most of this episode. For those of you that this is your first time, I can try to address every comment in depth. And it just, it's not as fun. I like, you know, responding to what you guys are saying and yeah that was completely unintentional with my um with the boots i was just trying them on and then i was like you know what i'm gonna wear them on because i can tie it in the dividend investing vf corp ticker vfc which we'll get to no news in a minute ah those anonymous are people looking have it locked yeah and that's what i did i i shared it so any of you can make a copy if you want do it you, you know whatever information you can take from it uh, I did think it was interesting looking at some of the stocks that have been poor performers over even 20 years and 10 years. Um, Realty income's just been okay. Johnson and Johnson's just been okay. So Sherwin Williams, weirdly enough, right? That tells me that they've got a big moat and they are a very strong business that apparently with such tremendous growth over so many years is one I wouldn't have expected. And if you look and this could talk and tie into why some companies that just because they pay a lower dividend, that that might be a clue that they're going to give you more capital appreciation because they're just plowing more of their money, their free cash flow back into the business and able to grow the business, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, people. Hey, KC, nice to see you again. What's going on, KC? I still got an email I got to get back to you on. And I, if there's anybody... The, my wing woman would get it here about uh, Cardinal Health operating margin less than 100 bips is pretty terrifying. Doesn't necessarily mean it's not undervalued. Yeah. And again, 
Uh, I just do want to preface that by saying that the undervaluation number, because I wanted to do it just quickly and give a flavor of what a valuation is out there. That's from, again, alphaspread.com, what they did that, uh, what they what they put it at. So again, it's always with a grain of salt. And we always like to say that the intrinsic valuation, when you see that number, that is like, it's just a range. It's It'll never be exact. It's completely subjective. Uh, it's like looking through the Hubble telescope. And if you're looking at, I don't know, Andromeda, maybe is a galaxy or a solar system, whatever Andromeda is, Andromeda, Andromeda. If you're looking at Andromeda through the Hubble and you turn an inch to the left or to the right, you're going to be looking to a completely different galaxy. So that's kind of how uh, intrinsic valuations are. It's a, it's you guessing or somebody guessing what the future earnings are going to be and then discounting that cash flow back to today. And again, it's just a range. It's like kind of knowing somebody needs to lose weight or gain weight without knowing exactly how much they weigh. I'm obviously firmly in the camp. I would hope of those that uh, need that. Kevin, you invested in 3M and in T this week. Man, you are a braver soul than I. Um, I didn't watch Ryan Williams' last video, the video from this morning, because yeah, it came out today. I know he sold out of 3M, spoiler alert. And uh, for the 60 of you watching, I hope I didn't spoil it for him. You know, I'll, I'll buy him a beer when I see him in Vegas eventually. But um, what was I saying? <laughs> Someone remind me. Uh, oh, yeah, 3M. I, I sold out of them completely. I just did not like their earnings. And you know what? It just, I kind of gave up. I, I mean, when I see stuff like adjusted sales, adjusted organic growth, adjusted free cash flow conversion, everything down the line was adjusted this and adjusted that and non-gap every like non-gap adjusted i'm like what i i just got to do too much digging and i'm like they're they're clearly trying to i don't know hide something or i don't know what they're doing but uh i don't see many other companies doing that where they are completely just laden with adjustments everywhere and yes yeah, sometimes it makes sense berkshire hathaway will have adjusted operating earnings. And it escapes my mind exactly why they do it. But when Warren gives his explanation of it, it makes perfect sense. And he's very open, very transparent about it. So I think it was what, what had to do with them with their investments, because they have a lot of investments. And per SEC rules, they're required to uh, mark those to market as of when they're doing the filing. So if they're down on a position that they're going to hold for 20 years, then it might show as a negative, I believe, um, either operating earnings or earnings per share. Again, I don't remember exactly. Somebody might jar my memory. So I hope, I wish you all the best of luck, Kevin. And I, I would like to sell out on T, and, but I'm stubborn and I'm probably going to wait for 20 and we're, we're going in the wrong direction there. So I'd like to know what you guys are doing with your shares of T. Are you staying away? Rick? Hey, man, it has, it's been a minute since I've seen you, Rick, buying Pfizer. Uh, I know they've had some issues, right, down with their COVID announcing that they, they're they like, yeah, just, what was it like 59% or it was some big number that because COVID's down that they're not receiving that revenue anymore, yeah? All right, DCAing in the VU, that's about as safe as you can get with it. Shamir, up there in the Great White North. Tyson reports this week. Let's see where there's a good one here. My buddy, my man, he has five to six. Yeah, you're going to be adding to your VTI, right? VTI, which is um, the sister of VTSAX. VTSAX, I know, is like what JL Collins talks about in the simple, simple path to wealth. But I think you needed a $3,000 minimum to start a position in VTI, uh, VTSAX, which is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Fund, I believe. But they have the sister version of it, which is an ETF, which you can buy fractions of a share if your broker will do that. And that is VTI. Um, 
I think the deadline is the 18th. I think I read and it's, a. I think I saw an amendment and I don't think I did. I skimmed through it. And it, I think the upper limit was 8.05 shares of Kenview. There's about a 7% discount right now. If you want to tender your shares, meaning if you want to swap, then I'm not going to um, just because I, I think that, yeah, they have a, 7% discount. They have a higher starting dividend yield, does Kenview, but I just don't see the consumer health products growing as much as the pharmaceutical products and the med tech, the medical technology products like uh, Abiomed. And as we as we heard Count Duarto, which is uh, the CEO, Joaquin Duarto, right? Joaquin, I think is his name. He reminded me of the count from Sesame Street. And if you listen to the podcast, I, I, I yeah, I compared him to uh, count the count from Sesame Street. <laughs> He's from Spain, by the way, is uh, Joaquin Duarte. I don't know where the count's from. Anyway, we don't need to. Anyways, everything I learned was from the streets, the Sesame Street. But yeah, I think it's the 18th. And I'm sure some of you will. Um, Oh, by the way, Cody, what's up, man? I got to say hello to my Chicago brethren out there and his channel. Check out Citizen of the Year YouTube channel. I got to stop doing this. It's like we're cutting, slicing into things. Maybe we'll do the, the Bill Clinton instead. But, yeah, how do you how do you keep an Italian silent? You tie his hands to his sides or something like that. But up, up, we're just at Italian Fest. It's okay. Those are my people from a little bit ago. Uh, look into Kellogg's at some point. Yeah, they have the investor event uh, on Wednesday and they are spinning off Kellanova, which I don't remember. Uh, we have Kellogg's for my daughter. Uh, I've never really dug deep into them. And that was a position, full disclosure, disc disclosure I had held was Kellogg's. And we uh, I sold them because I thought there was some better use for that money. And I had only bought them because I'm like, hey, my kids eat Kellogg's branded cereals, which, dude, they're terrible. I don't know what, I don't know why they eat them. Full of garbage carbs and sugar and, you know. And I love this. The red team, the portfolio, think if she could see a breach in the mode of any business using a vast. Yeah, so tying back to that, I had used, uh, just gave a really quick thought. Because when I read that article, I was like, huh, you know, that's kind of cool. Like red teaming your portfolio, meaning trying to run a simulation or just even as simple as thinking, hey, whatever your biggest position, like say my biggest position was PepsiCo at like 12% one time, thinking, imagine if they went to zero tomorrow, how would that affect my life, my portfolio? Would that affect my future plans? How would that do that? But exactly, you can red team, you know, a uh, I know Apple, right? We've seen a little weakness with Apple. And, and I remember we've, we've talked about it on this right here uh, channel that I think it's almost 50% of their revenue comes from the iPhone, which is good. But if we ever hit that recession and people just stop buying phones, it's going to be a dent. It won't sink them, but yeah. So the whole thought was, this is slicing and dicing still. The whole thought was, what can you do to red team, not only your portfolio, but even your life where I think about, you know, the bulk of my in my revenue, my income stream is from one and I'm trying to build out slowly. We're building out those other income streams, but dude, having, they say having one income stream is as risky as a business with one customer. So a fun and easy red teaming event or simulation would be to say, imagine tomorrow I go into work and they're like, Hey, we love you, but for whatever reason, you know, we don't need you anymore. So thank you. You know, good luck. What would you do? Like, would you be completely blindsided and have no plan whatsoever? So, you know, what would your vulnerability be in that regard? So it's kind of cool to just think about things like that, you know? So yeah, <laughs> red teaming your life and your portfolio. All right, let me get a good one here. Hello, Mariana, buying Mo and SCHD. I do want to be live with you people here. So I am going to see what do we have from you. Need uh, wandering music. Wasn't it um, Family Guy when Peter had that uh, traveling music every time he walked around somewhere? 
All right, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is kind of fun. So Casey took a second job to buy more uh, Hero Health while it was under 20 bucks. And I myself have been adding here and there little bits of Hero. And I'm not as deep in the knowledge as Casey is. Now, she spends many, many, many hours diving deep into these companies. And in a way, I think she's kind of doing her own little bit of red teaming when she, and that's what we should do when we research companies, right? Um, you know, I guess we could just build out that analogy further is when we do our stock analysis research, we should be red teaming, looking what flaws we see, what vulnerabilities there are in the business that might affect it. Because as we're investing in it, any of those flaws, if they're exposed, that's going to material affect our investments. So yeah, she just been buying more Hero Health, which again, I, you know, I just, I've become a big fan of Mark, Mark Baum. And I love that. Dude, he wants to dominate one sector for eye care, the pharmaceutical. I completely butcher the name every time I need to commit it to memory. The ophthalmological, that's really wrong. <laughs> it's really wrong. But we'll just say I care the eye medicine. <laughs> Dumb it down for me, for the guy wearing combat boots and cargo shorts. Hey, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, they are going to be spinning off. I don't think we have a name for it yet, do we? Uh, their consumer health business as well. Every it's Dude, it's the new hip thing. It's what all the kids are doing. You, they're all spinning off their consumer health businesses. And I think we've seen the last of the conglomerates, which means just bolting on all kinds of businesses into one under one big umbrella. But, you know, sometimes when we set those individual businesses free, they can fly better. And kind of like AT&T spinning off Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, you know. Ah, look at that. Yeah, what happened with that? So Jim cut the cord on Icon and Camping World. I did see that Icon was down a bit, so I, I don't know what happened with that. Maybe you can fill us all in. And back to Shamir's thought about 3M spinning off the healthcare business is that I think, I think they're going to use this as cover to cut the dividend pretty much like AT&T did. And if that new business isn't paying the same amount, then that's a cut. So in the notes today, we did it with, um, oh, who was it? Not Emerson Electric, not Pentair. Maybe it was Pentair. One of the, the, the dividend aristocrats in 2018 spun off a business and that new business continued paying a dividend. And if you put the two together, the two dividends from the parent and then the spinoff, and you put that together, it was the same amount. So like they said that the dividend investors were made whole, so they didn't count it as a cut, even though the parent company, it looks like they reduced their dividend. So I think, and that's something we're going to have to watch out for is I think that and that's why AT&T was a cut. If Warner Brothers Discovery kept paying a dividend or started paying a dividend, um, and it um, equated to the amount that AT&T reduced theirs or right-sized it by, then it effectively would not have been a cut. Um, but I, I have a sneaking suspicion that 3M is going to use this as an event to say, <laughs> we're bringing in less revenue now that we spun the healthcare unit off, so we're reducing the dividend. And we're going to have to watch. And it's just a lot of risk. I, I just would rather not um, deal with it. Okay, let me get back to you. Working my way back to you guys. Interesting. Yeah, I'd, again, I'd love to know, Jim. And I know that was a short report about IEP, just completely crazy. I, I never really dug into them deep. But from skimming it, it looked to me like that icon, basically the family and retail investors are the only two entities that owned that business, but they would pay a dividend. It was a stock dividend. So they would issue, I believe, right, more shares of Icon Enterprises. Now you could sell those, but obviously that would also be a taxable event. But yeah, I think that was the shadiness that they were doing, something about that. Would I invest in Disney when they start paying the dividend again? Yeah, I probably wouldn't just because I think there's a lot going on with them. I think they really overshot the uh, streaming. It's a lot more capital intensive than they found out. And 
you know, we're going to see. I know, Casey, you've got some thoughts on Warner Brothers Discovery that you shared, and I still got to get to that. Oh, my apologies. I get I, There's not enough hours in the day. But uh, it's really highly capital intensive. We see that with Netflix, right? Takes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money to keep that content churning out. So I think that Disney's struggling, right? A lot of their newer releases haven't done as well as the older ones did. Like it's kind of floundering some of the Pixar stuff. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't remember. I don't even know that should show you like when cars came out, like I knew about it, man, we had little kids, but, um, yeah, I just not, not a lot of confidence in the business. And I think they're going to have to do a lot of things. And I have Florida, there's politics in that, you know, they might use that as cover to do something, you know, it's, they got, they got some stuff going on over there. Uh, yeah, T's going to be getting some lawsuits. We know they're coming. We know they're coming. And, uh, right. <laughs> Do you hear that sigh? That's just, uh, there's just one thing after another. Like when's the last major lawsuit from the maker of my G of my G fit right here, PepsiCo. Uh, it's very rare. Like it just seems like T and some of these businesses have so many lawsuits. And when they do, there was one back in the day. Does anyone remember that? What it was for T uh, PepsiCo? Not bad, man. You know, we got from Costco. We bought a 15 pack, a box of these from Costco. So <laughs> there we go. Hey, whenever we get to plug PepsiCo, right? All right. Um, I got to get caught up to you guys. This is nutty. All right, let's see. Pharmaceuticals make 10 to 1 on production costs over the counter on one product. Yeah, I, so I guess you're talking about in reference to me saying that I think that. Well, dude, I think the during J&J's last earnings call, I think it was pharma and med tech or just med tech someone correct me, had 25 names that brought in in $1 billion or more in annual revenue. So that's why I think they're really, really poised to hopefully continue growing. They can focus on the pharmaceutical and the med tech. Now they don't have to worry about consumer health. Um, yeah, they're keeping the litigation, the liabilities from the talcum, but you know, we'll see. All right, I'm getting caught up to you guys. Hey, Ray, haven't seen you in a minute. What's going on, Ray? Makes me think. Uh-oh, I love it. And you know, brother, that's what he said right here. Uh, Harris did. So I know, yo, yo sabe un poco español. Uh, I, yo sabe es un, you know, mal. I know it's bad. I know my Spanish is bad, but <laughs> here we go. I love it. Casey, not going to zero is a call. Reasonable bear kit. Yeah. Yeah, that okay. That's the <laughs> that's extreme, but we'll say fifty percent draw. How about fifty percent drawdown from where it's at? Yeah, I mean, that would be funny. I mean, if if PepsiCo were to go to zero, I don't know. There's that would be crazy. That's kind of fun to war game stuff like that. Well, not fun for you know, um, dude. I love it. What is the name of your channel? Is what Charles said. I'll just do this all day, guys. Keep it up. I'll just just stop and I'll translate. All right, I got to get caught up, guys. I am. I apologize if I skip <laughs> if I skip over anything really important. I want to get. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I love it, man. You guys. Why did dude one penny? I don't know penny in Espanol. John, <laughs> how'd you say it? Um. Uh, no sabe, no, yo no recuerdo la palabra para, para penny in español. I don't remember the name for penny or the, the word, palabra is word. All right. Um, okay, guys, that's fun for me. Let's see. Who cut it? All right, I'm, I'm getting caught up to you guys now. Here we go. Thank you, Casey. IEP, icons, financials are a mess. Oh, so that's what happened. Regulators. God, my hair's getting, I'm going to put the hat back on in a minute here. It's all over the place. All right. I'm almost caught up to you guys because we were just talking. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Here we go. All right. 
Hot take here from KC that on a three-year timeline, she thinks Warner Brothers Discovery crushes Disney in terms of total returns and too many moving pieces on both sides of the model with confidence beyond that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, but, you know, I just, I've, I, and the market shows it, right? There's very little confidence in Disney right now. And you don't hit 52 week lows usually without good reason. And it will be the astute investor that can see through what the market thinks they're seeing and invest and invest confidently and hold through all that turbulence, all the turmoil, all the naysayers, all the analysts that downgrade it and see it as a great buying opportunity. So if you have a a catalyst, and this is why we say some of the best investors, they will tune out the noise. They will develop their own convictions and see why everybody's wrong. Because that is the essence of kind of like what um, in this book right here that Christopher Mayer talks about in 100 Baggers. Uh, in 100 Baggers, he talks about, good book, by the way, um, just being contrarian and sometimes having to sit through drawdowns like with Amazon. Sometimes some of these companies will draw down 60, 70, 80% multiple times. And you would have had to hold through that. So you really had to have conviction and know why you're investing. So if you believe in Disney, you know, that's all that counts. You don't, you know, all right, I'm, I'm getting caught up to you guys now here. Don't folks, don't folks smoke, drink and entertain in bad times and good. Yes, they do. But that the revenue can be down as well. And it doesn't automatically guarantee that people are going to keep, right? If people are hurting, people sometimes shift their spending habits. But in generally, yeah, that's why we call those consumer defensive stocks, right? All right, all right. Da, 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 da. So who else got? I love the S on you. Ah, there it is. Yeah, he wants Taco Bell. And the word, everybody, the word of the day is centavo. <laughs> for all right uh let's see thank you guys gracias amigos míos para la corrección en español para la palabra centavo something like that or other i don't know okay the streaming companies like the auto industry yeah i get that feeling man as i was kind of wrapping that at y'all uh, we'll do news here I'm, I'm almost caught up right we'll do some quick quick news for you people. But what's Casey's favorite stock? I would say at this time, it's probably Hero Health. She'll answer if she's still around. Uh, is Disney become too big and bloated and not really focused in terms? Um, yeah, I don't know. There's talk, right, that they're going to spin off ESPN. But even then, like, dude, when I was a kid in high school in the 90s, ESPN was the, what's the bomb? Dude, everybody... Every sports fanatic watched ESPN. We loved ESPN. And now, eh, not so much. It's just, I really don't remember the last time I went on ESPN.com or used something from ESPN.com. And it's just kind of like that old name. Like maybe that's a, a melting ice cube. Yeah, you know what, man? Um, when we got those shares first. Oh, by the way, uh, if you haven't, I dropped on Friday the interview I did with uh, Craig. Uh, SCHD Stan, Leroy Skywalker, which he turned me on to a movie that we're going to eventually watch, The Last Dragon, and from the 80s, he tells me. But yeah, good interview. I had fun, man. I had fun making it. And he had a bold claim about SCHD. I'm not going to ruin it. If somebody wants to ruin it, go ahead. But uh, let's see. So uh, yeah, I wish I did that too, because WBD, when they spun him off, Dude, it was pushing $30. It was like $26, $27 a share. And of course, I was thinking like, I think I'll think about selling this, this thing when it's over 30 And the dropping started and it just did not stop. So missed out there. All right, who wants to do some news? Raise your hand if you want to hear some Simply Safe news and upgrades. And yep, HRO is 75% of her portfolio. So I that's... That's serious conviction, and Charlie Munger would smile favor favorably on you. Why? Well, because 
when you are that heavily allocated into a position and it does really well, that needle moves. The needle will move so fast as damn near breaking that needle. But when you have, you know, 150 different allocations and one does super well, it'll just, it's almost not even noticeable. I mean, it's good, but you're taking a lot more risk. And I'm sure she's going to say, uh, because of how confident she is, it doesn't really feel like risk. Risk is only when you don't know what you're doing and you aren't confident in something. So that's, um, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah, ESPN, I think I think they'll probably move it off onto its own eventually, see what they can get for it, and I would just steer clear of that. And da -da. all right, we'll, we'll do news here. What do I think about BDVG? I don't know that, but I knew <clears throat> I did look at um, DGRW, which is the Wisdom Tree Dividend Growth ETF. It has a 0.28% payout ratio that it's heavily tech focused. I think almost 30% of its allocation is weighted toward tech and it doesn't have that big dividend yield. It's under 2%. And the growth is just not anywhere near like an SCHD. And uh, somebody had commented, so that's why I took a minute to look. But it's so heavily uh, weighted in tech that it really could just continue to go up. And I think they said that DGRW will smoke SCHD. But if we see that pullback in tech, if there is a healthy pullback, you know, it's probably going to struggle a little bit. Okay, so... <clears throat> Casey is telling you all about that. And we will do the dividend news right here from our friends. I wish I could say brought to you by our friends at Simply Safe Dividends, but not yet. Not at this time. Let me share this. We'll share that. We'll make the screen bigger. We'll make this bigger for all y'all that have problems with, or maybe you're just on a small screen. Hey, does anybody watch the bear? We're in season two of the bear takes place. It's a love letter to Chicago. So uh, what do we have? Yeah, the first BP. Sorry if that's making you sick. British Petroleum raised their dividend 10%. And by the way, I'm not going to read these all. If you want to pause the screen, go back and pause it and, you know, look at it. St study this little quick blur blurb. Feel free. Oh, almost 50 borderline safe, almost a 5% dividend yield on that. We had Essential, the water utility, raised their dividend 7%, 3% dividend now. Hey, my guys, over at Main Street Capital, they got a 2.2% dividend increase plus a $0.27 cent per share special dividend that's coming also down the pike uh, on top, well, on top of that. So almost a 7% dividend yield. Really enjoy Main Street Capital. We've done well with them since we've held them. Federal Realty Trust raised their dividend 0.93%, which is the longest dividend growth streak among, amongst amongst wreath, which uh, realty income is just be behind them, below them. 4.22% dividend yield. Iron Mountain, which, dude, they used to shred paper. Now they went digital. Good for them. Yay, Iron Mountain. You know, that's how you should ad adapt. You know, that's what they're doing. Here we go. They're adapting to an increasingly paperless world. 4.27% uh, yield. Uh, it's below their five-year average. American States Water. Check that out. 69, 69, 69 years of annual growth. I wish this would go away. Go away. <laughs> was, uh, I don't know, 8.2% dividend yield, 2% yield, 69 years of dividend growth. Check that out. MDU, they separated a couple segments, I believe, and lowered their dividend by 44%. Hope that didn't affect anybody here. They reiterated their outlook on UGI, which, by the way, owns Amerigas. Shout out to all of you using Amerigas propane cylinders on your barbecue grills. Carlisle, the building products company, hiked their dividend 13%. All right, let's get through. And I think we're almost caught up. Dover, which is headquartered right here in Downers Grove, Illinois, right off of I-88. If you're driving that way and you're about to go to Highland Avenue, look, look over to the south and you'll see Dover up on the building. <laughs> the building, hey guy, you didn't put it, you forgot to put a G on the end of that word. I sure did. 
I I don't know what I'm saying. 68 straight in raises, and it, they just microscopic dividend raises. So you don't buy them for um, dividend yield. And then here it is, tying in with my boots, VF Corp. They got another dividend downgrade to 50. And Harris, I know you sold out of VF Corp. But kind of if I could summarize it, they have a new CEO. He turned around Logitech, and they think he might be getting aggressive and cutting the dividend again to really have as much capital as possible to say like, look, we need to fix the business. So screw the dividend for now. We got a business that needs some fixing without a G. He said, he said fixing, all the fixing. So yeah, they um, they cut that. They, they got the dividend king crown and then they cut the dividend right away. So uh, they think they could potentially cut that dividend again. And then the last one here, Illinois Tool Works, ticker ITW, raised their dividend 7%, which is uh, they've raised it every year since 1972. And that is pretty much that for the dividend news. And I'm going to see what all you beautiful, beautiful people are saying here. Okay. All right. Hey, Kevin, he's always slipping in quietly, man. We appreciate you. Use the front door. Be all loud and boisterous. By the way, if anybody, I'll be up in Milwaukee again going to see Ghost. So, hey, if you're going to go and see Ghost in Milwaukee, maybe we'll bump into each other. Uh, probably not going to see my man, um, uh, the little guy I, I ran into. If you're watching, I, I, I told you guys, too, that was the first time somebody recognized me out in public. And it was this little kid, probably like 10 years old. Uh, I know he told this story, but yeah, it was just like, I thought somebody put him up to it and he was, you know, screwing with me. Uh, he's like, excuse me. He's like, you're a YouTuber. I was like, what? You're, you're a YouTuber. I was like, yeah. And then he told me, I used to watch you. I'm like, used to, you little jerk. No, nah, I took a picture with him. I asked him his name, which I've forgotten because it was loud and it started anyway. But if you're watching, man, hey. What's going on? I hope you're doing well. So yeah, he bought a little ha uh, Harrow Health, and funnily, fun. <laughs> we'll just make up words here. Funnily enough, uh, we were talking after the stream about Harrow, and I said it's funny. Somebody had told me they bought Harrow around 28, and it was around 2021, 20, and they were nervous, and they either sold it or were thinking of selling it. And I, like I said, it's this is why you can't buy on other people's convictions. And just because somebody says that they love a stock, you can't, you can, but if you go through a rough patch and you don't know why you bought it, it's going to be really tough to hang on to it because you just don't have that conviction. So one of the things I told him was that off the top of my head, I don't remember the numbers, but there are some incentives built in for the management team at Harrow Health. So when the stock does good and they've held the shares, I believe, for two years and they hit certain targets, then they will get compensation. So it's like they win, the shareholders win, and it's not going to allow them to do some crazy stuff like just a massive buyback or just taking on a loads of debt, whatever it is, all the financial sh <laughs> financial shenanigans that can go on here. See, I told you we make up words to manipulate the share price in the short term so they can get their bonuses and do something to wreck the long-term project trajectory. It must be a late Sunday night. The What were we going to say? Projectory? That's projection and trajectory when you just smash it all into one word. Anyway, so yeah. All right, and I want to hear what you guys said about John. It was I enjoy, I really enjoy talking to you guys, and I think I'm going to have to do it. I think I'll have to do one with I had kind of touched base with JJ Buckner, and I should do one with Ian Lopik, um, just because that would be fun. But you know, it'd be a little bit of be a little starstruck. Like that was one of the first first guys I started watching, probably circa late. Uh, late 2018, early 2019, started watching Ian. And yeah, it's just, uh, it's a weird thing. Even though I'm older than him, it's still kind of like, you know, I learned so much from him about dividend investing. And like a lot of us, uh, he really motivated me to not only start and continue, maybe not start, but to 
continue dividend investing and looking for passive income that continues to grow that I can receive without having to sell shares if I didn't want to. Uh, but a lot of us got our uh, from him. Anyway, the yield max funds. John, what's up? I don't believe I've seen you before around these parts, John. I haven't looked into them, but I know TSLY, they – because I watched, was it Ryan's? Ryan's or Darts? I don't know. They they sell derivatives on Tesla, like synthetic <laughs> synthetic covered calls on Tesla shares. And I I think it's I don't know about more volatile, but it will have bigger swings up and down. So I know there's a super high yield on it, and it just feels to me like too many people are gonna buy that for the dividend yield and something's going to go haywire and, and we haven't been able to, it's so new, right? Case in point, has it been able to have been red teamed? What would a red team look like on that? That's a question I think I would need to ask and answer. So thank you, Clifford, for giving me the assist there, my man with BDVG. Dude, really? That is not even two months old. So I don't know what BDVG is. I should know. We're going to go ahead and write that down so we don't forget. And who knows? Maybe I'll have an ETF forthcoming about a uh, video about BDVG. I, yeah, I don't know why their dividend safety score is 50. Uh, for those of you that would like to know, simply save dividends. The kind of the, the way they sell it that they charge so much is that they say that they manually look and grade every single business and they do like what we saw with UGI, meaning that they reviewed all their financials, they reviewed everything and they maintained and reaffirmed that dividend safety score. So this is people, the crew over there, it's simply save dividends. It's not an algorithm from what I understand that gives these their ratings. So for some reason, they give it a borderline safe dividend safety score you know, maybe because it's tied to a commodity, tied to oil, um, that could be one. Uh, and that they did have a propensity to cut the dividend last time. Well, that was kind of unusual. So I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, let's get to you, people. Good point. I love it. Uh, John asked Casey why Buffett doesn't buy Atro. And yeah, it's just too small. I mean, they would find they could find the couch cushions over in Warren's office to buy uh Harrow Health. It's just it wouldn't move the needle, it's just way too small. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Berkshire's entire market, uh, Berkshire's tax bill is bigger than Harrow's entire market cap. It, it well said, I like that. And yeah, and again, um, if K Casey hasn't said it, this is why Warren has said that. If he had a million dollars, I think, right, he could easily, he would guarantee a 50% return on that money because he would have so many more opportunities uh, because now they just have such a gigantic, ginormous pile of money that they need to invest with. So, all right, Knife River spun off MD. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. It probably is a crime. Um, it will be interesting. I, I'd love to know if anybody would buy VFC. They have some interesting brands, but yeah, Harris, he mentions it on his podcast, which by the way, um, I, you know, I really like it, dude. I get every Monday morning, I have my certain podcasts I line up and one penny is I enjoy hearing your podcast, man. I love listening to it. So yeah, he's a lot. He always talks about it. I got my vans. My wife wears vans. I wear vans. They got van mat. They even got matching vans tattoos. They did not get matching vans tattoos, but I wouldn't be surprised. You guys, you guys, hey, you guys, what's that, Goonies? I saw Ghost open for Iron Maiden in twenty. What? No, I didn't. Now you're just fabricating rumors out there. I wish I did, but, and I think you're just saying that because you have. It's not your wheel of. It's. <laughs> Heavy metal is not within Harris's circle of competence, I believe. So, yeah, let's, yeah, but I will, but I am seriously going to see Ghost in uh, Milwaukee. So that'll be interesting. We're 
staying overnight. Looking forward to it. The wife and I, we do these things. And, you know, we're, we're hitting up the end of it here, the end of the show. But, you know, you guys, you got to take time out and live life off the spreadsheet sometimes. This is something I'm learning. Um, we just sat down and figured out our savings rate for the very first time. Getting serious about planning because where we want to be. The question that we're trying to ask, and it's it's a lot harder than we thought, is saying in four, almost five years, what do we want and how are we going to get it? Those are the two questions we're trying to answer. And then chunking it back to today to kind of give us direction of what we need to do, where we need to be, what we should be saving. But figured out the savings rate. 36% is our savings rate from 2022. So that's kind of cool. And, you know, I keep, and as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I bet we could get that up to 40%. I could do a little bit better. So I need to get caught up to you guys at the end here. So I do apologize if I am skipping by you guys. I like you guys that I like it. Shamir covered, covered call gimmicky ETFs. I like it. I think they're going to start being the rage. You're probably, and you know, when something's a rage, when you're going to see a ton of YouTube videos all on TSLY and things like that. Yeah. That's why Harrow had a pop. They, uh, pink eye drops, right? Vigamox. Vigamox, Vigamox for pink eye. The old, the old stink eye you get. It's uh Oh, here, convinced TSO is created solely so fund managers could short Tesla while hedging by going long TSLY. A lot of value guys are out for Tesla blood. And, dude, they have been forever. Uh, one of my Monday morning shows I love listening to is um, the Acquirers podcast. And, oh, by the way, Casey, thank you for tuning me on to the Compound and Friends, uh, Michael Batnick and Josh Brown. Really enjoy listening to them. It, it's just fun. And, you know, it's, I, I'll, I'll say this, if you've never listened, give it a whirl, but it's kind of like where I'd like to get my interviews to go. And it's, it's a, being on this end, it's a really strange thing, interviewing somebody you don't know through a camera and recording it. And even talking to you guys, like, it's just the weirdest thing that there's freaking 66 of you on the other end of this thing. And I'm just here. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's fun though. I enjoy it. And this is something I look forward to doing and keeping on doing for many, many years to come, by the way, shout out return of the living dead. One of my favorite movies. I do love my horror movies, especially from the eighties. Um, Oh, Harris saw them. God, I thought, here I am. How pres how presumptuous of me to start spreading rumors about myself when you were talking about yourself, Harris. Yeah, he saw a ghost. Well, there you go. I'm Now I'm making up things about him. Uh, sorry, what is this? I'm Dividend Snowball on X and Facebook. Oh, cool, dude. I will follow you. Send me a message or a DM or something. I don't know. I'll follow any. I don't really care. You know, it's funny. All right. All right. All right. Nice rate. Yeah, dude. So far. So 36% savings rate in 2022. Oh, did you? I don't remember it. Yeah. Um. So can, the very first time I remember hearing about them was KC did because I've done it too. They talk about not making the the home alone face, you know, the, <laughs> your thumbnails. And now every time I see it, I can't, I can't, you know, I think, um, uh, Kevin, um, uh, Kevin, uh, from, um, why everybody, why am I blinking on his last name? Uh, Oh my God. I'm sorry, Kevin. If, if, if you watch this, that he did one and now I see people doing Cause I've done it. The home alone face. Like you're just, you're so surprised that you're like, look at this dividend yield. I can't believe it. But yeah, they said they made fun of it. And they're like, I hope we never stoop that low to ever do that on our thumbnails. All right. Ah, Caleb. Nice, man. IIPR. They had a really solid earnings report. I have yet to listen to their earnings call. It was on Friday. I listened to Realty Income. I listened to Main Street Capital. I listened to some of Enterprise Products Partners on top of my podcast, on top of an audio book I'm listening to um, from Dan Harris, the news anchor called 10% Happier 
about just meditating, being 10% happier. So I, I listen to stuff all day long, but tomorrow I do plan to get to IIPR's earnings call. And I, I just, from scrolling through a few comments, I saw that it was pretty solid. Uh, they're probably one of the more safer. Well, they have a spectacular balance sheet. Um, not a lot of debt. They don't, they do have some debt, but they are at risk. For, they're more at sector risk. Fantastic company, but they can't control what happens with laws of legalization, um, banking regulations around the cannabis industry, if and when it does go federally legal, and it'll be there eventually, and just uh, consumer sentiment and shifts and competition in the space. So that's kind of what they, um, yeah. So I like them. I have not been buying them, but honestly, if, if they get to around $115 a share, 110, 115, I may seeing where things are consider selling out of them, but, um, we'll see. I probably should be buying some more now because it, it feels like the tide is starting to shift. Things are starting to turn every, everything cannabis was just crushed. And now it feels like it's REITs turn, right? Almost everything REITs, they get a little pop and then they get smashed right back down uh, because of the whole interest rates and everybody thinking that the whole, um, the CRE bubble is going to, you know, come tumbling down. But yes, so that's what I think about that. Uh, yeah, I would, we didn't get to it. I would look at Cardinal Health. Um, again, that was just Alpha Spread's opinion, valuation, thinking they're really, really, really undervalued. Travis, hey man, I don't think I talked to you, Travis, yet. Um, thank you. I do appreciate that. And I'm learning, continuing to share what I'm learning. And uh, I do, I I really do enjoy interviewing and chatting with people. So again, looking forward to that. And I'll I'll have, I'll probably drop you in a line. And yes, Kevin Burgess. Thank you, Charles. A couple more here. Josh Brown is a technician and not a fundamentals guy. Yeah, they sometimes do a lot of technical analysis, which is charting. If you ever see the Japanese candlesticks and the chart patterns and just trying to look at price movements is what you're using to buy stuff. So uh, Backstreet, Backstage Wall Street, I don't know that. Interesting. I don't know what Backstreet, I can't read. We're going to Backstage Wall Street, right? Backstage Wall Street. I'm going to remember that and look into that. So I love reading stuff like that. I appreciate that. All right. So thank you. Oh, not me, Kevin. Yeah, no, Kevin Burgess. It was Kevin Burgess. So I do thank you for that, everybody. And I um, let, we'll end with this. Yes, if you want to listen to earnings call, download the quarter app. Funny story. I still have to change it. But in the quarter app, it's pretty cool. They have an AI model that's in the quarter app and you can put in a phrase and anytime an earnings call drops, it will ping your phone. It'll give you the alert. So I just did dividend, right? Dividend. And it'll say realty income. Uh, uh, it'll, it, yeah, it gives you a little badge. It'll say realty income dividend mentioned four times or whatever. And then you click on it and it'll show you the instances. And you could do that with any word, but after all the earnings have been coming through, it's one, I think it was like, um, I want to say Thursday. Holy crap. I, it said like from quarter, I had like 123 <laughs> notifications just in one day and where dividend was mentioned at least one time in an earnings call. So there are so many dividend paying stocks out there and I love it. I want to find more. But obviously, as I talk with Casey, I also want to break the mindset of trying to pigeonhole myself into just and ignoring companies that don't pay dividends. So, but till, till we meet again, everybody, that's, that's another conversation for another day. And again, just, you know, it's, it's with great sadness that I, that I play this and I watch um, my peewee <laughs> again. Yeah, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for coming on by. And I'm going to play it. I'm going to continue playing this. It hasn't been um, put away. It hasn't been flagged or anything. And it truly is just 
I love sharing it. I love hearing that ending music. I was always so sad that Pee Wee had to leave, but it was always on a Saturday morning and there was no DVR. There was no nothing. You had to be right in front of the TV at that time to watch it. And I never missed it whenever I could. So everybody, thank you for hanging out with me once again and sharing your thoughts, ideas, comments. Casey, thank you as always for being a spectacular wing woman on the live stream. I'd really do appreciate that. And everybody, I will be back. I hope I'm going to schedule it next Sunday. We'll be coming back. Uh, I'll be home just playing around. I'll be, uh, you know, maybe a little worse for wear after seeing ghosts and staying out late. But again, everybody, thank you. Be safe out there. Have fun this week. Go do something fun. And uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing what you did with your investments. Pee Wee, Paul Rubens, buddy, miss ya. And uh, you created memories for me that will remain for the rest of my life. I'll see you. Uh, <laughs> I'll see you later, everybody. Yeah.